um, or chapter 2.1, part 2. Piecewise functions. We'll be spending quite a bit of time in class on these. I'll show you on the video how to do them, but we'll go ahead to in class do them on calculators the way they want to need to do them. Okay, so uh, piecewise functions, functions that are different output formulas for different parts of the domain. So they can even have breaks in their domain. So, you know, it can make um, way back when, this was when you guys, you know, probably in kindergarten. Um, the mobile for your phone to call. You would get so many minutes a month, and then after that, you would have to start paying. That's a perfect example of a piecewise function because, for say, the first 10 hours, you know, so however many minutes, I don't you know, 600 minutes, you know, you didn't pay, you paid one flat charge. And but as soon as you went one minute over that, they would start charging you extra, kind of like they do data now, is that you have so much data and then it jumps up if you go over your data. So um, that's a perfect example of a piecewise function. Okay, so um, on this one here, for each piecewise function, find the specified function values. Be really, really careful on this. This is where people tend to make mistakes. Um, they'll throw a negative five and they'll just throw negative five in. This is your domain right here is telling you about your domain. And so you have to identify where does negative five go belong? Does it belong in this domain or does it belong in this domain? Well, negative five is less than negative two. So negative five belongs to this guy. Do the same thing with negative two. Negative two is less than or equal to negative two. Yes, that's true. So he belongs to this guy. So we calculate, but it doesn't matter what the x value is, the value is three. Okay, and then the next ones, I know there's a few more. Zero, zero is greater than negative two, that is true. So zero is gonna go into this one. And the next one they have down here is two. Two is greater than negative two, so it's gonna go to this one as well. So this is half of zero plus six is going to give you six. And then half of two plus six will give you one plus six or seven. Okay, nothing more to it than that. The biggest mistake students make is not the math. It's plugging it into the wrong equation. You have to make sure it's, you have to pick which domain it belongs to. It cannot belong to both, one or the other. So you only get one answer from these. You will never get more than one answer from these. Okay, so here's another one. So let's first decide where these guys go. We have negative four. Is negative four less than negative two? Yes. So he belongs in that domain. Is negative two less than negative two? No, they're equal. Is negative two less than or equal to negative two? Yes, it's equal. So I get to throw it into this guy. And then four, is negative two less than or equal to four? Yes. Is four less than or equal to four? Yes. So he goes to this one as well. And then the last one here, six, is six greater than four? Yes. Now I didn't go back to this one because four was at the end. So I didn't see the purpose of going to it. Now we just plug and chug. So this is a negative five times negative four minus eight gives you 20 minus eight or 12. So the answer is 12 on this one. Negative two, plug it in. Half of negative two plus five gives us negative one plus five or four. Next one, four goes in here as well. Half of four plus five gives us two plus five or seven. And then the last one, 10 minus two times six is 10 minus 12, which gives you an answer of negative two. And we're done. That's it on those. 
So next it comes into graphing these things. So this one here, we're going to graph them, the first couple, I think the first two, and then the third one we'll do 100% in class. So we only have two poems to go on these ones on how to graph these. Now, this is no different than going all the way back to Algebra 1 and graphing. It's a plug and chug process because you have to watch your domain. Don't forget, this is your domain, the x values you're allowed to use. And here's the number one rule in graphing these. Always use the endpoints. Always use endpoints. I don't care if it doesn't have an equal sign or not. You always use the endpoints. You cannot go, oh, zero is not included, so I'm going to jump to one. What about all of those fractions between zero and one? You've completely ignored them. So we have to identify zero, and we put a nice little open circle there, and we move on. So I'm going to graph these a little bit differently than I have done in the past. So my x values, so if you're doing, normally we do a t table, do x, y. Well, my x's have to be less than or equal to zero. So I start at zero. And I have to have my numbers have to be smaller than zero, so I go to negatives. Negative one, negative two. And here's the one thing I'm going to point out. That equal sign tells me the zero is included, which means it will be a closed circle. So I'm just put that to the side so I don't forget. My y values, however, are going to be negative one-third x plus two. Oh, I just saw this. So I have a negative three. I have a three here. If I divide, if I multiply by one, I'm going to get a, I'm going to keep the fraction. I would really like to not keep the fraction. So I'm going to use multiples of three. So we'll come in here and we erase these. I don't want negative one. I don't want negative two. They are not multiples of three. However, Negative 3 is a multiple of 3, and negative 6 is a multiple of 3. So I plug this in, 0 times anything is still 0, plus 2 gives me 2. This one I'll go ahead and write out the math for you. Uh, we'll do it right below. Negative 1 third times negative 3 is positive 1, plus 2 gives us 3. And then negative one third times six. I'll put negative six over one, just for those who aren't seeing this. This is going to give you six over three, which is two plus two gives us four. Now this is also linear, so you can use, use the slope of negative one third. So I'm going to graph this guy. So my first point is at zero two with a closed circle. And then negative 3, 3, and negative 6, 4. Now to get a nice straight line, of course, I'm going to draw the, I'm going to use my, my sources. There's the first one. The second one I'll, I'll, I'll do in purple. This one. My x values have to be greater than zero, but again, you have to use that endpoint. So you start at zero. I need numbers larger than zero, so I want positives. One and two. No fractions, so I don't have to worry about that either. But my y values are going to be x minus five. So zero minus five is negative five. One minus five is negative four. Two minus five is negative three. And again, no equal sign, so it's going to be a nice little open circle when I start this guy. So 0, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Nice open circle. And then the next point is at 1, negative 4. And the one after that is 2, negative 3, and so on and so forth. And there's my line going that way. Now here's one thing I have to throw out there, except for endpoints, the x values will never cross. They will never cross, because if they cross, they're not a function. 
So it completely throws everything out. They will never, ever, ever cross. I gotta throw that set up there a million times. They will never cross. Your Y values, it's possible. You, you'll get different Y values, or you can get the same Y value. You can see, if you're looking at this one, that eventually my second equation, X minus five, will eventually get a Y value of two, and three, and four, and so on. Because it has an arrow on it, it keeps going. If we talked about domain and range, well, you already have your domain. Zero to zero, this one is included, this one is not. It's all real numbers. I don't want you to, but, but it's all real numbers. Our range on this one, if we start at the very, very bottom, we do get to claim that it's negative five, but there's no jumps in my range after that because this one goes off to infinity. So it will eventually pass this guy and this guy goes off to infinity. So my range will, it, its restriction is negative five, open circle, negative five, and it goes on. Okay. So the calculator part where it says check your results in the graphing calculator, that one we will do in class tomorrow. Okay. Next one, now they're throwing three on you. Okay. So we'll use three different colors. So the very first one, X has to be less than or equal to negative two. That means I will use negative two to start. And it has the equal sign, so it's a closed circle. And then my Y values are going to be four. So negative two, my X values have to be smaller than negative two. So negative three, negative four, doesn't matter because my Y value is always four. No, please do not, and I've had people do this. They go, oh, negative two times four is negative eight. No. There's no X values, so there's nowhere for you to plug in your X values. So it's just four. Okay, so we come over here and graph. So negative two, positive four. It's a closed circle. Please make sure that those are obvious. Only the endpoints, so you have to worry about it. Notice I'm not really concerned with these guys here. I'm just plotting points at this point. And there's the first part of my graph. Okay, next color will go to blue for the next one. Okay, so on this one, the nice little range of numbers. Negative two must be less than X, which must be less than three. So have to use the endpoints, and because I have a beginning and endpoint, you should use every number, both the endpoints, beginning and end, and all the numbers in between. So negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and three. Please don't go negative two, negative three. No, that's this guy over here. If you can read it backwards, X is greater than negative two. So my values have to fall between, anytime you see this, You've taken the numbers between the two, negative two to positive three. No equal sign, so this guy's going to have an open circle. No equal sign, this guy's going to have an open circle. They are the only two, the ones in between are included. It's the endpoints. Endpoints are the only ones that cannot be included. Okay, and then my y value is going to be whatever x is plus one. So negative two plus one, negative one. Negative one plus one, zero. 0 plus 1, 1 plus 1, 2 plus 1, 3 plus 1. And you'll plot, I'm really only going to plot these ones because this is nice and linear. Negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, nice open circle. And then negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, and then 3, 4 is a nice open circle. And this one will not have arrows. I'm just going to draw from one open circle to the other open circle. No arrow because it does not continue off anywhere. Okay, and the last one we'll do in red. 
So this time my x values must be greater than or equal to 3. So we start at the, our endpoint, which is 3. My x values must be greater than that, so 4, 5, and we can continue on. Equal sign is included, so this is going to be a closed circle. And my y values is just simply going to be the negative version of x. So if x is 3, my y value is negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and so on. So at negative at 3, negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Nice closed circle. And then at 4, it's negative 4. 5, it's negative 5. And that one just keeps going. There's no boundary. So I'll grab the arrow one. And this one goes in this direction. So again, I can talk about domain and range on this guy. You can look at the graph or you can look at these. Negative, okay, no, in, no deadline, no endpoint to begin with on the negative two, so negative infinity to negative two included. There's no jump between the negative twos. It goes negative two, negative two to three. And then, so all of those values between negative two and three are included. And then three to negative three, those values are included because it's included here, which means my domain, all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. My range, we do have to look at the graph for the range. If I use that line, I say let's let's grab it. I think we'll need it on this one. As I bring this guy up, the first thing I hit is in my net, my arrow. And it's pointing to the negative y, so negative infinity. And then at this point, we're going to take this until it stops. And it stops at negative 3. And this value is included. So negative 3, bracket. Union that when it starts up again. And we bring this up and we get all the way up here and it starts again at negative one. Notice that's an open circle, so we have to count for that one. Negative one, two. And we come up here until it stops and it stops and starts. I don't know what you want to call it. The question here is that this is this value is the same as this value, which is one, two, three, four. This is an open circle. This is a closed circle. So do we include four or not? Obviously, you can't answer me. It's not It's not included here, but it is included here. So we'll, it's kind of like this one here. It's included here, but not here, But we so we include it. It's not included here, but it is included here, so we're going to take it. So it goes from negative one to four to four, including four close bracket, and there's your range. We can talk about increasing, decreasing functions as well, because why? We have a constant function. But guess right, your domain's already here, or your, your values. Constant, negative infinity, negative 2. And then it's increasing from negative 2 to 3, decreasing from 3 to infinity. All right, this problem here, we're going to do both types in class tomorrow. Um, so, and then a nice little reminder of the homework. There you go. And good luck.